So the saddest thing about Newton, I think, is that he never, <clears throat> he never considered the idea of energy. He figured out, here he is, he figured out um, so much about physics and discovered calculus in order to do his physics, but, uh, but never considered what could have happened if he'd been, for instance, infinitely far away from the Earth. All of his work with gravity, yet not that simple situation. Look at this. I want you to, uh, I want you to say that Earth is right here, and Newton is infinitely far away from Earth. Let's see. Where are we going to want to use? Uh, Newton, on one of his more punk days here, infinitely far away from Earth. And, well, I guess I should draw this shape right here to show you that um, <clears throat> there's an infinite amount of space between them. So R is starting out at infinity, and we'll call that R naught, the initial position of Newton. So we can look at his gravitational potential energy, Newton's initial gravitational potential energy is, well, there's this minus sign, and then it's capital G times the mass of Newton times the mass of the Earth divided by how far apart they are. Now, there's no square here. The square occurs in the force. There's no square in the potential energy, and we saw that because we're taking an integral in order to get the gravitational potential energy. So if, <clears throat> and I suppose we can go to a more teal sort of color, if r naught equals infinity, then u gravitational initially is, well, let's see, it's going to be negative g times m1 times m2 divided by infinity. I don't care how big negative g is. It turns out negative g is actually really pathetically small. But the initial gravitational potential energy of Newton is zero. <clears throat> and um, let's, let's just write out this problem. I think it'll be really important to have it written out. Newton is at rest infinitely far from Earth. And Newton is given a slight nudge. So let's examine Newton's total energy. Newton's total energy is, well, it's his gravitational potential energy plus his kinetic energy. And his gravitational potential energy is zero, and his kinetic energy is zero, so Newton has no energy to start out. But as Newton is he's given a nudge this direction, boink, then he will accelerate towards the Earth. And we know that the force of gravity will be doing work on Newton. That means that Newton will be losing gravitational potential and gaining kinetic energy as he accelerates towards Earth. So let's see if we can get that down. Um, I want to think about how his gravitational potential energy will be changing. And I'll set up a set of axes here. Here we go. This is versus position. And those are going to be energies graphed right there. So gravitational potential energy will start out at zero and then get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, like that. But we know that energy is conserved. So the total energy must be the same always zero. And if the gravitational potential energy is decreasing, then kinetic energy must be increasing. And the kinetic energy of Newton started out at zero, but Newton will be speeding up. And in fact, what we know is that Newton's total energy is always zero. So I'm going to draw in a pink line Newton's total energy. This is going to help me draw Newton's kinetic energy as a function of time. This is Newton's total energy at zero. And gravitational potential energy is this brown down here. Gravitational potential energy as a function of distance. And then um, I guess I should use blue for new Oh, man. I need to find something that, when added to this function, gives zero. I guess it's going to be the opposite of the function that I've got written above. Interesting. So this is Newton's kinetic energy. And let's figure this sucker out. Here's what I want to say. I want to say when Newton gets far, far closer to Earth, we can figure out how fast Newton is going. It's a simple exercise to say that, well, check this out. 
energy is conserved, so E naught is E final, or mi i is mi f as we used to say, and zero is going to be the final energy of Newton. So let's see, we put potential first last time, let's do that again. That's going to be negative g times m1 times m2 divided by aura. <clears throat> let's see, we could even be a little more specific. Let's do the mass of the earth times the mass of Newton. Mass of the earth times the mass of Newton. And then we have to add on Newton's... Ooh, you know it would be really cool if I had done these in the right colors. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I'm going to do it. Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say E naught, which is this pink color. E naught is E final, and down below it, well, E naught is zero, and the final energy is made up of the brown, negative G times the mass of Earth times the mass of Newton, divided by how far away Newton is. If he's going to actually fall to Earth, then we can call this the radius of Earth. And then we have to add on the kinetic energy of Newton, plus one half the mass, oh wait, do I want the mass of Earth? The mass of Newton here, totally, the mass of Newton. And then V square right there. So this is the velocity, it's the final velocity of Newton as he runs into the Earth, assuming no air resistance, but using the true force of gravity at that distance. If we solve this equation for V final, we will find out how fast Newton was going. There's a cool simplification. I suppose we can divide by the mass of Newton. In fact, this is completely independent of the mass of Newton. And uh, I guess we're dividing that by the mass of Newton too, and that's okay. So I'm gonna solve this for the final velocity, so I'm gonna multiply by two and I'm gonna move that to the other side so I get two times capital G times the mass of Earth divided by the radius of Earth equals V final squared, but instead of writing that, I think I can just screw that. Interesting, this is how fast Newton is going if he falls from infinitely far away. Depends on g, depends on the mass of the Earth, depends on how far away from the Earth he's going to get. So, there's this idea of escape velocity, right? And I would like to propose that everything that we've just done can be done exactly oppositely. Check this out. I want to assert that escape velocity is the velocity at which escape velocity mm -hmm, the velocity at which, let's get a little bit more paper going on right here, mm -hmm, escape velocity is the velocity at which energy total equals, well, energy total means gravitational potential, right, plus kinetic, I want the total energy to equal zero. That means that if Newton is given that escape velocity in exactly the right direction, his kinetic energy will be so big that when it falls down to zero, he is infinitely far away. Now you know what's happening. As he's losing kinetic, he's gaining potential. And they are opposites of each other the whole time. That means he's escaped. That's what escape means. Escape means that when you're infinitely far away, velocity is zero here. So escape velocity is the velocity at which you're kicked away from the earth and with no additional, no additional forces other than gravity, you completely escape the gravitational pull of earth. Now you don't want too much energy. Obviously you could have a greater velocity than that. Escape velocity is the bare minimum at which your initial kinetic energy is exactly equal to the opposite of your initial potential energy so that your total energy is zero and you can escape. This is a really beautiful thing. So you can check back in the video for solving, oh shoot, this is the escape velocity. That's it, it's right there.
I guess it depends on just a couple things. Gravitational constant of the universe, really a pathetically small number. And it depends on the mass of the thing that you're escaping and how far away the th from the thing that you're escaping you are. Good.